competition the nation had to offer. Ellie Glock, six foot redshirt sophomore out of Nebraska, been outstanding so far at the starting setting position. Right out of the middle. And if Louisville starts that way, this is going to be a short match. You saw a good serve, right? Teardrop in the middle to Ogilvy. Couldn't pass it, couldn't get an attack on it. Louisville makes him pay. Glock again. Perfect first contact by Baird. And you see the difference in the result. Iko Jones was there defensively, but not necessary. You have a three-meter line violation by the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Kendall Kipp, wearing number 10 in black. Ellie Glock averaging 9.5 assists, serves well. As evidence there, Ogilvy stepping in. Nice first contact and off the edge of the block by Sammy Francis. The six foot six middle blocker wearing number 17 out of San Diego. And if Stanford really wants to get out of these rotations, these hard served rotations by Louisville, they're going to have to find their middles early and often. Cami Miner did a really good job of setting Sammy Francis there. 5'10", sophomore wearing number three and a Pringle defensive specialist on to serve. That is a really quality reception. Not a good set, that ball well off the net, but a tough, tough serve handled very nicely by Scott. Scott moving well deep. You see that they're structuring their serve receive a little bit further back away from that 10 meter line because Stanford is known to serve to the end line. Rotation number one. And that ball nicely over the top of the block, and I mentioned that because that's a rotation with Iko Jones. She's a right side specialist. That's the one rotation she has to hit on the left. And this is where you have an option as well. You can have Charity Lupler go and they stack on the left side, but Iko Jones taking care of that ball on that left pin. Charity Looper, 5'9", junior out of Dallas, Texas, the transfer from UCLA. Having a very, very nice first season here in Louisville. Baird through the block and down, and a little bit of a deflection. You don't see that often. Not coming up with it was DeBeer or Scott. Elena Scott will give you her digging numbers. They are exceptional, nearly four digs per set. Working on DeBeer. And down the line and just out of bounds. Pretty good looking swing and a nice delivery by Glock, but just a hair long by number 14 in white. Now you see that DeBeer is going to take advantage of that line shot because that set is being pushed. She's telling Glock to get that ball to the pin so she can take advantage of line. Here is Cami Miner out of Redondo Beach, California, the reigning Pac-12 setter of the year. Pick Ron Kong, you live right here in Louisville, so you've seen Kong a lot during the course of her development the last three years. Did you expect this from her? I think she's playing at a really high level. The pressure of her coming into the match uh, in the semifinals last season was no pressure at all. She came in, she dominated, she got some blocks where Louisville needed. But right now, I think she's feeling a little bit of that pressure to perform, and she's doing her job. Cressy with a nice block touch. Kip is dug. Transition opportunity. But DeBeer through the hands that time of Vicini and out of bounds. Very nice transition volleyball for Louisville. And that's the name of the game again. DeBeer going down that seam. She's seeing that the availability of her attack is always there on cross. Scott again working on Baird. Baird off the right side. Scott all over that. And Cressy in transition. Really good overhand defensive take by Elena Scott. Kara Cressy, one of the real reasons why Louisville has not dropped down at all after losing so much from last year. And right on cue, six foot six Cressy, hitting 553 so far on the year, 1.3 blocks and a 4 nothing run by the undefeated Louisville Cardinals. And she's leading the nation in hit percentage because of the transition offense that Louisville is able to munster up. Quick 7-4 lead. Puccini off the top of the tape, pretty good pass. Good block deflection. Looper, who's also been playing some really good defense. Good hustle by DeBeer.
Jen Louisville makes it very difficult to get the ball on the floor. Multiple swings, and finally, the big block by the Cardinals. And I mean, that's the quality. Looper is just top notch in area six, but you see DeBeer track that ball, and it gets the crowd live. Stanford's passing the ball pretty darn well. A hitting error here. Their first contact has been okay. But the Louisville block and backcourt defense, their block defense has just been way too good. Early timeout taken by Stanford, trailing 9-4 here in Louisville. When you can save on Target's Good & Gather groceries and all the fall flavors. When quality ingredients bring more to the table. And when you're serving up tastes they love at low prices, that's totally Target. Do you have, a, do you have a, like a smaller dog? Yeah. Time to go. Do we have everyone? Help. Psoriasis really messes with you. Try, hope, fail. No one should suffer like that. I started Cosentix, five years clear. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentix. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentix. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections, some serious, and the lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to. Tell your doctor if your Crohn's disease symptoms develop or worsen. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Best move I ever made. Ask your dermatologist about Cosentix. Back at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky, the number two ranked Cardinals on top of Stanford 9-4. Crowd of about 10,000 expected on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. 12,760, a new record for Louisville Volleyball on Wednesday night as they took down their in-state rival, the Kentucky Wildcats. Really quite dominated fashion, three sets to none. In that match, Louisville hit 344 to only 196. For the 2020 NCAA champions, the Kentucky Wildcats and Elena Scott, 4.5 digs per set already with some really nice connections. And you were talking about it during the break. The Louisville block right now is doing a really good job with some touches. And I don't think people talk about that enough. What slows down the ball is the block touch to be able to get those quality transition plays and make it easier for Elena Scott to put that ball on Glock's head. So block touches, first line of defense is super, super important. Well, I knew as a middle blocker you were going to not, not let all, all the credit, not let all the credit go to the defensive specialist. Here is Katie Baird, All-American outside hitter, missed the first three matches of the season. That's going to be an interesting violation. Wow. This is a very difficult call to make. Ellie Glock was up to set the ball, and the front row attacker, Elia Rubin, came down and hit the ball back onto Glock, and Glock is in the backcourt. So bang, bang play, and a much needed point for Baird and Stanford. That ball might have been out of bounds, but touched by Looper. That is not a good set. Mm. That is a perfect set in transition, and there's the block touch you were talking about. Yeah. First line of defense. Uh, players laying out, but better quality tight block by Louisville to start. And that's, I think, what's missing on the side of Stanford, those block touches to be able to run that transition offense. They're not really getting that first touch. That first contact, like you had mentioned, is fine. They are just needing to make sure that they're getting those quality block touches as well. There is sixth year graduate super senior, Iko Jones. Are we Rich. still saying super senior? <laughs> I just said it for the first time, I think, ever. A redshirt year and then a COVID year, and number 15 has been here in her new hometown, and what a career Iko Jones has had. 1,634 total kills. Here is Ogilvy. Perfect first contact. Again, quality block for Stanford there. Six foot six, six foot five, and very athletic and can get, really get off the floor. Francis, along with Kendall Kip. And this is the aggressive block. They're in a great rotation. You see that they're moving very well, very quickly, but that block is not going to get past Kendall Kip. 
Good job by Stanford coming out of the timeout. They had given up a 4 nothing run and now answered with a little mini run of their own to get back within two. Looper out of the back row. You won't see that happen very often. Oglevy got, got stuck in the sands of her native Hawaii. She absolutely did. She didn't get stopped in that position because she knows, she scouted this Louisville squad. She knows that Looper comes out of that big. So she has to make sure her feet are stopped to be able to push that ball forward. Anna DeBeer, a much, much larger leadership role this year. It's hard to be a leader at ball serve just out of bounds when you miss two months and your entire, you know, 70% of your season is spent in the training room and at doctor's offices, but she is clearly one of the top leaders for her team this year in Louisville, 9-0, and number two in the country so far. A very impressive non-conference. Here is Kendall Kipp. Nine attempts per set, the reigning player of the year in the Pac-12 conference. Looper, a high flyer, got a touch off the block and off Baird in the backcourt. And this is a really good, again, good rotation because Stanford is going to try to pass Looper when she pushes back in serve receive, but you see that she kind of bails because she's letting Scott take bulk of those, those service balls. Watch this ball move. Kara Cressy hits a very, very clean, oh, thank you very much. Jinx. <laughs> I was gonna say clean, <laughs> flat serve. Had a couple of aces against Penn State, served well against Kentucky, but that, Kara Cressy was a dud. Better next time through. Here is Ruben wearing number 13 in her second season at Stanford. 6'1 sophomore out of Brentwood, California. All Pac-12 last year. That was a very tough serve. Flat and clean. Clean serves. Nicely done by Ruben. And Ruben is going to continue to go after that scene between Looper and the freshman Camden for Louisville. So very good serve. She's going to try to hit it again. That ball drifts just out of bounds. That ends a 6-3 run for the Stanford Cardinal, but back within two. Very nicely done by Kevin Hamley's squad, and what a non-conference they have played. At, they played at home to Florida, lost, went to Texas, swept the Longhorns, went to a very good team in Houston in Rice, to Houston to play Rice, then back home Ohio State, Minnesota, and then Nebraska. That ball missed out of bounds by Francis. I mean, one of the toughest, if not the toughest, non-conference schedule I think for Stanford. I think the toughest. Absolutely. Stanford hitting zero right now. Four kills, four errors. So scoring no points in the attacking phase. Iko Jones is a very good outside blocker. And great quality touches. If you can see their eyes and how they adjust to the block, this is what is the difference maker for the block for Louisville. What, we talked about second contact after the block touch. What a perfect set that time by the Libro Elena Scott. Right on target to Iko Jones. And you see just Louisville causing Stanford to be a little bit more one dimensional than they would like. And you take that second ball from a former setter in Elena Scott, and you're gonna get a point every time. Boy, Stanford. Error riddled right now. They struggled at times. Boy, Nebraska's team. Nebraska has been one of the biggest surprises to me, and we've got a list of that. I mean, Nebraska took down Stanford, and they did not look very Cardinal-esque at times last Tuesday. Well, we got a break in the action here with Louisville leading by five. Coming up next over on ABC and the ESPN app, the Sky square off against the top seeded and defending champion Las Vegas Aces in their best of three series. That's the WNBA on ABC and the ESPN app. We've talk talked about Florida being a surprise, mm -hmm. Nebraska to some being somewhat of a surprise, particularly with their convincing win at Stanford. Has Louisville at all been a surprise? I don't think Louisville has been a surprise at all. I think that when you look at the totality of their team, you may think that since they've lost such key players, Claire Chasse, they've lost Amaya Tillman, they've lost a core group, but I think the Brazil tour for them during the summer has caused a little bit more cohesiveness than even the fans would know, and they're coming in 9-0 and today. And the Texas Longhorns, the defending national champions, like most other teams, like Louisville, they had a lot of shoes to fill. 
but they had quality players returning and they've lost three times. They lost on the road to Long Beach State. They lost at home to Stanford and then they lost just yesterday also at home to Washington State. Interesting before the match, the Cardinal faithful were, were given the opportunity to welcome the Stanford, I, I know I'm gonna go back and forth, the Cardinals, <laughs> the Cardinals faithful to welcome the Stanford Cardinal to the ACC. And the Stanford players really chuckled. They got a, a really, really nice welcome from this big crowd. And they will be moving into the ACC next year along with the California Golden Bears and SMU. So Stanford got back within two, now trailing by five. Louisville very good offensively, 10 of 16, only three errors. And I think with Glock serving here, she's really aiming for Baird. So taking them, again, being one-dimensional, Ogilvy has to step in and take some of those balls. Really nice play. Not only receiving, but yep. attacking. The All-American coming back, number 22, Katie Baird. The redshirt senior out of Indianapolis was part of the national championship team, team back in 2019, as was Kendall Kipp. Didn't play a very big role on that team that was led by Catherine Plummer. Pringle back on. Out of system, Iko Jones off the left side. Smart play by Eichel, just keeping it in the court, making it pretty easy. Kip has been very quiet out of the back row. The combination, the location from Cami Miner, not quite there, but that's evidence of what that, that combo can do. Well, I'd beg to differ because I talked with Kevin Hamley earlier, and he says he likes to run that D a little bit inside the court, and you see Iko moving inside, leaving that line for Kip. Nice swing by Jones off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Yeah, my point was about the three-meter line violations, not necessarily the distance inside the antenna, but the distance off the net. It's not as smooth as it should be. I really like Kip off the D instead of right down the middle because it gives Louisville's blockers time to adjust out of that middle, but not so much on that right pin. D is out of the right back, the pipe out of the middle, as you might imagine, and a couple of service errors. Cressy had one awkwardly early, and here is Charity Looper, six aces and now 16 errors so far on the year, as Cami Miner will go back to serve. Daughter of Harold Miner, back in his days at USC, in the 90s was the National Basketball Player of the Year. Did a bunch of his games, both in... Oh, my goodness. Holy moly. I think I blinked Pecron and missed Kong. it. I think I blinked and missed it. How about the elevation from PK? But the connection has to be there, and the timing has to be precise for that to take place. I think that she is one of the most improved middle blockers in all of college volleyball. And, and not just because it was so spectacular. She's really playing both days as well. And they're reviewing it to see if it was in because it happened so fast that I think everybody in the building blinked. Well, Kevin Hambly wasn't blinking. His eyes were wide open and thought that ball was <laughs> out of bounds. You start with two challenges. This will be a very good look. Oh, that ball was in. I think that ball is in as well. It was just laser fast. Yeah, that ball, that ball is in. Ball flattens on the sideline, any part of the ball on any part of the line. Now you start with two challenges. You can challenge ball in or out, touch off the block, net violation, foot fault on the serve, foot fault on the three meter line, four contacts, ball up or down, and now can also challenge whether or not the Libero was legally behind the three meter line when setting. So the list keeps getting longer, and as long as you are correct, then you have an infinite number of challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that ball was in, right on the sideline. Again, lays are fast. Now, just because that ball was in doesn't mean that PK for Louisville had enough real estate to really make that happen. So <laughs> she, she created. She created, making sure she puts that ball right before that 10 meter line. Impressive for Louisville so far over number five, Stanford 9-4 to start this match. Calling for a quick timeout now, 18-14 is the advantage. And Stanford down now to just one challenge unless we go the distance in five sets or in the fifth set, each team will receive an additional challenge. And you know, that's something I would like to see more. I love Beard on that right pin because she hits that nice angle past that right hand of the middle blocker. So she's really aiming for area one and Glock could not handle it. Baird with four kills on 10 swings and Kip is really struggling right now. One of six with three errors. Ruben ripping inside.
Stanford out of system. Very smart roll shot by De Beers. And cross body again, first by Kong and now by Cressy. Again, we said it, it's the transition play of both teams that's gonna make the difference because both of them have that secondary defense. I think Kip should have taken a little bit of a swing, been a little bit more risky, but just tossing that ball over to a team like Louisville, they're gonna pick it up and put it back over. Kong, a perfect three for three, and Cressy right now will give you her numbers in just a moment. She is three of four. Nice dig by Looper. Hip is getting slowed a lot. Good block defense. Deflection here by Stanford, but can't control it. Second contact wasn't good enough. And you see Baird back there in area six for Stanford. Kind of standing, kind of watching a little bit. Caught her off guard. And she couldn't get a handle on that to get some transition offense for Stanford. Nine digs right now for Louisville. Six make it five digs for Stanford. Kip off the edge quickly. And that right pin is going to be critical for Stanford. Get some production over there, and they're going to make sure that the shorter block and Anna DeBeer, although she's very aggressive, that she's going to utilize those hands. Second kill for Kip. Once again, first team All-American last year, Pac-12 Player of the Year, two of nine with three errors, still hitting negative. Here's Ogilvy. Misses that hybrid out of bounds. We'll give you the serving story so far. Stanford with one ace to go along with a couple of errors and for Louisville no aces and four errors so far. And here is De Beer. The lead is 21-16. It has been all Louisville so far in this opening set. Combination nicely done. Francis took away the middle blocker that time, Cressy. And Cami Miner with the tempo really doing a good job of executing. She took Cressy out of that, gave her attacker Ruben a single block, and that's how you're supposed to put it on the floor. Stanford still has time. Good point scoring rotation with Kip in the back row in area number one serving, but missed that weakly into the net. <laughs> I said Cressy serves so well. I think Danny Buscombe Kelly didn't like that previous serve that tumbled into the net. Subbing out here to bring in uh, a defensive look. CC Rush coming in to take that serve for Cressy. Cressy can be a weapon from the service line at 6 6. And the same result. Did we jinx again? Uh, it's probably all my fault. <laughs> I did try to say nice things. I mean, 22 to 18. Our computer is a little bit slow here. I've got to be more careful with the, the scoreboard in the building. There's Aaliyah Rubin. Really struggled against Nebraska offensively. More on that after this play. On the pipe, De Beer has that ball trickle through. Kong on the back slide. Just execution off of these transition plays. You see that Louisville is taking a lot of these balls with their hands, making sure that they're setting the pace. And that ball is down by PK. Louisville hitting 480 so far. And Pegron PK. Kong, perfect four of four. Look at Looper, three of three. Cressy, three of four. They're shredding the Stanford defense right now. Again, making it easy. Good touch in system here, and Baird will throw it right into the donut or the campfire, depending on your taste. Very, very nice shot by number 22 in black. You know, something we have not seen from this first set at all is the aggressive play of Cami Miner. Usually she would have taken a couple balls over on the second touch by now, but we're maybe starting to see that she needs to take a little bit more of an aggressive approach in the offense. Looper been rock solid in serve receive. And that ball gets down somehow. <laughs> Interesting set that time by Vicini. First she thought Vicini was going to take that second ball over, but she says, I want to pretend I'm a center for <laughs> today and put that ball in the air. They're having a good, they're having a pretty good chuckle over that one. And Stanford has not played well in this opening set. Louisville has. They have outplayed Stanford, but Stanford's got time to find a little something before the end of the first set. De Beer, what a good swing. 
Ellie Glock decided to go pipe to DeBeer for the set point. And you have to understand how difficult it is to track a ball that's coming from behind you and over your shoulder. You see that DeBeer takes a good solid swing. She was patient out of that pick, and she hits to area one. Really good balance for Louisville DeBeer now with her third kill, set point number one. Kip unloading. That's Kendall Kip. And that is, again, what I like to see. I love how she approaches that D, because sometimes it's, it's forgettable, where you're making sure that the front line is getting the ball, setting the ball closest to the net. But pushing that ball back to Kip, it's a beautiful opportunity to hit that line shot. Set point number two. DeBeer on the left side, Iko Jones much more comfortable over on the right. And how good has Pekron Kong been out of the middle so far along with Pressy? Oh, not a good set. That didn't come out very cleanly at all. Chance for Stanford. Beautiful up by Oglavy. Defense is on display. Tough chance for the beer, well off the net. Look, I, I was very impressed with Ellie Glock and how smooth she was both against Penn State and the win over Kentucky. But maybe feeling the nerves as the expectations grow. She's now taking the place last year of the graduated senior, Raquel Lothro. And it's a big, big step up. And, and she looks a little off her game to me so far. A couple of uh, sets that were not particularly clean. Well, we've got a break timeout called by Louisville. What a week for ACC Network football lineup we have for you that starts Saturday at noon Eastern with Syracuse hosting Army, then Boston College squares off against Louisville, cap the night off with number 20 North Carolina and Pittsburgh at AccuSure Stadium, formerly Heinz Field. It'll always be Heinz Field to me. At 8 p.m., all three games are also available on the ESPN app. And you can watch anywhere, obviously, on the app with two-time All-American here at Louisville, Jen Hoffman, and 10,000 of your neighbors and, and hometown <laughs> friends. Stanford's making a little bit of a move here. Let's take a look at the current top 10, Wisconsin. Like Stanford, the most complete team coming back. They return virtually everybody from last year's team that went to the regional final. Your thought on where these teams line up going into conference play? I think we're looking at that Wisconsin-Florida matchup that's happening later today. Really excited to see what comes of that because that's potential number one switching of that uh, coach's poll. But Georgia Tech taking a loss to in-state Georgia this past week. Minnesota lost Minnesota. yesterday. There's going to be a lot of movement. Oregon beat Pittsburgh. And when you watch when you watch Florida later this afternoon on ESPN, check out six foot six freshman Kennedy Martin, an absolute star in the making for the Gators. Set point number three. That's wow. Violated the plane of the net. That was a very, very tight pass, and Ellie Glock doing a good job getting up there. A great and right now, Louisville is just taking care of the ball much better than Stanford in serve, receive, and transition. Elia Rubin will start things off for the fifth-ranked Stanford Cardinal. That ball set outside the antenna. Looper working hard just to keep it in play. And a dig right on target by Scott. And Cammy Miner couldn't find it. That's really a frustrating play. Good block deflection, but I, I don't know about you, but, but I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Absolutely not. But again, the ball was slow enough to be able to find it. So we have to make sure for Stanford is looking for those quality touches because the block set up by Cami is there. Here is Looper. Just underway second set here in Louisville. Tight pass. What a read. Pegron Kong, six foot four senior out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Played a lot last year, played well on that team that went to the championship, but has taken it to another level. And Paul, I want you to see the discipline here by PK because DeBeer rolls out to Sammy Francis on that right pin, and PK knows that Cami Miner is front row and that she's an aggressive set setter. That ball served just out of bounds by Looper. If you're just joining us, Louisville undefeated at 9-0, coming off a three sets to none win on Wednesday before 13,000 here at the Yum Center over Kentucky. Got out to the quick 9-4 lead. Stanford was forced to call 
call a timeout, 18-14. They did get it back to 24-21 and put a little pressure on Stanford before Louisville closed it on Louisville before Louisville closed it out 25-22. Kip again, that ball away from Glock, off of Ellie Glock. And another kill after a very slow start by Kendall Kip. Kendall Kip is an su absolutely superb athlete, six foot five, has all the tangibles and, and intangibles, yes. Very quick, somebody for an athlete that is so physical at the net, has a big presence, she's very quick. See here again, I hope it's taking that ball right down the seam. Middle has to close for Stanford. Mancini not there. Iko Jones now five of eight. All, all of the Cardinal attackers hitting for a pretty nice efficiency save right now for Anna DeBeer. Bear down the line. What a dig by Looper. That ball set too tight. A little hesitation right there from Baird. Baird having to work hard. There was a touch there. That ball's called out of bounds. This is a tough one for Kevin Hamley. Yeah. He has one challenge left. It's so early in the second set. I, I think there was a touch on that particular play. But he doesn't dare be without any challenges. And as, and as you know, and the audience knows by now, the, t the block touch is the toughest one to confirm. Looper again with the dig. Good high flat shot by Iko Jones. Six kills on nine swings, hitting almost 600. I think the icing on the cake for Louisville is the quality second touch from former setter Scott. She was a setter at her high school here in Mer at Mercy, and now she is one of the nation's best liberos getting that second ball for Louisville. Service errors starting to become a little bit of a story for Louisville. Hard to criticize them. They're on top of Stanford rank number five, 25-22, one set to none, and 5-3 here in the second. Thank you very much. You see this total service errors right on cue. Here's Cammy Miner. What a nice save by Ellie Glock that time. Smart shot by De Beer up into the block. Absolutely, and I don't know if it's just me, but I get a, I get a sense that Stanford is getting caught watching what Louisville is going to do, and then a little bit reacting. There was no presence there at the net. You've got to wonder where Vincini is on that middle block. She's got to stay on Cressy. Tight pass again, saved by Miner. And that ball is rejected. Vicini out of the middle along with Katie Beard, number 22 in black. There has to be some excitement for that. I was excited for them. They have to make sure that they are getting every point that they possibly can. They need to make sure that they're utilizing the errors on the service line by Louisville, but also getting some good quality blocks. Let that be the thing that jumpstarts your offense. Baird was really a bright spot against Nebraska earlier in the week. The numbers that she put up. 15 kills on 30 swings, and now over 1,000 kills to her credit. Again, wearing number 22, and there's Kara Cressy. Right now, the middles for Louisville are almost perfect. We'll give you their numbers. Kong is four for five. Cressy is five for six. No errors. They're both hitting 800 or higher. Scott again, good set in transition. Off speed, restart the point. And DeBeer out of the back row. She's been most effective coming out of the back row in the pipe is number 14 in white. And I don't know if Cammie Miner for Stanford slipped on that opportunity, but her feet weren't stopped. And you see that defense right there. You see catching Cammie Miner a little bit off center, not having her feet stop. And DeBeer get that, gets that kill. Really tough flat serve, a lot of velocity. And Ruben is blocked. Ellie Glock on the outside registers her first tough. And now the lead is 9-4. I think we need a timeout here. Yep, Stanford. Exactly the same scenario as the opening set. Same score, same situation, same crowd, same lead.
Papa John's garlic sauce fans, we made the garlic epic stuffed crust pizza just for you with that garlic flavor. Get it on it with it. But you wanted more heat, so now <laughs> you can get it in spicy. Get a one topping for $13.99 only at Papa John's. So this is the uh, place. Is that crown molding? Did you do that? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Are you on the Raisin Bran Crunch? Good boy. Do you want to see the kitchen? <laughs> Team Hard Shell, Team Soft Shell, Home Team, Winning Team. With Old El Paso, there's always so many possibilities. Today, I'm doing the Degree Gray T-shirt challenge. Let's put Degree Advanced to the test and see if I get any sweat marks. Degree Advanced, with nonstop protection and instantly dry. No sweat marks. Degree, it won't let you down. Hospital bill for Prime. <laughs> Did you just say gap? He's talking about expenses health insurance doesn't cover. Good thing Coach Prime knows about. Say it one time. Affleck! <laughs> Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover at Affleck. All Louisville so far here in the second set on top of Stanford 9-4, as you can see, when the opening set 25-22, hitting 370 to 093 for Stanford and two of the marquee attackers Katie Baird and Kendall Kipp for the Stanford Cardinal both Kendall Kipp hitting 290 on the year and Katie Baird hitting 358 both of them way 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 below and both of them together have amounted to six attack errors so that is the reason for those low hit percentages Oglavy struggling right now in, in serve receive another chance for Louisville and down again. I'll tell you, the quality of contact once again. CC Rush coming on, doing a really good job in the backcourt. CC Rush. It's actually Camden for Louisville. Yeah, Camden Trend. Excuse me. Thank in, you. Thank in you. In area one. And she does a really good job just coming in as a freshman, really taking some hard serve receive balls as well, but doing a good job as you see her running in there. Tracking it down. <laughs> Tell you, play in a building this size, there's a lot of room around the court. And Camden Schran, excellent hustle chasing that ball down the 5 7 freshman out of Villa Hills, Kentucky. She stepped in nicely, playing a big role as a defensive specialist. Aiden Bartlett had that position all last year and the year before, but right now it's Schran. Looper's passing really well, as is. Basically everybody for Louisville an unforced error there a rare one first hitting error for either of the middle blockers for Louisville in Cressy and the ball just a little low for Cressy tempo still there. She just needs it a little bit higher. There's Elena Ogilvy. That ball missed just out of bounds. We were talking about it before. You know, that, that to me was a really good pass by Elena Scott because the serve was of such high quality. She was able to get that ball to the three meter line. And, and just like in the opening set, Stanford making a move. And unfortunately, I think that ball was just a little bit too high for Looper to really get control over it. She likes those really deep, hard, quick balls, as you can see there. Look at that perfect set in transition. Both Libros doing a magnificent job defensively. Here's Baird. That ball set too tight. And De Beer off the block and out of bounds. Very, very smooth, composed transition. De Beer now with five kills on 22 swings. Louisville hitting 327 so far in the match. Cressy will stay on to serve. Louisville leading. 11-7. Kip again going high flat. They have found that solid connection that Stanford has to have. And I think Kendall Kip again going line, making sure she's going off of that shorter blocker, either with Charity Looper on that left pin or Anna DeBeer, making sure she's high hands, going line to score. Six kills on 17 swings for both Baird and Kip. That ball's got to come up. 
Baird was a little bit late. Tough chance. She's playing center field. That ball slowed down off the top of the tape. And you're taught to be a little bit deep, and that's where Katie Baird, she did a good job of being in the right position. She goes through the seam of the block. She was just a little bit too far because that ball took the tape and slowed down. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. She was in a good spot. She'd also yep. read the hole in the block. Yep. Just slowed and fell in front of her. Here is Glock. Nice looking offense. Perfect pass by Ruben and attack off the left side. Mentioned that she really struggled against Nebraska. We'll get you her numbers. And um, she was only seven for 27 with 11 errors. And I asked Kevin Hambly before the match, did he think about subbing her? He said, I thought about it, but she was passing two seven out of three. She was just passing nails all match long. And I think for Stanford in general, with their match against Nebraska, everybody struggled. They had 15 service errors. So regardless of how tough you want to serve, you also don't serve it to one of the best passers on the floor in Lexi Rodriguez. And they're doing a better job of executing where they want these serves to go, either toward Looper or toward Anna DeBeer. But you see Elena Scott passing that one. And you get a transition, and you get a kill. Nice play once again by Kong, making herself available. What do you do as a middle attacker when the ball is not passed perfectly, when a little bit of distance off the net? It's all about spacing for the middle blocker. You make sure that you understand where the ball is traveling to your setter to make room and take that advantage to be able to score. And PK does a good job of making space. Although she doesn't transition off the net very well, she makes space for herself and block and find her easy. Kong back-to-back -back kills. Kara Cressy is six of eight. Kong six of eight as well, hitting over 600. Both of them are. Difference in the match right now. Well, the real difference in the match to me is the ball control for Louisville. Much, much better than Stanford. And Stanford, again, is not taking advantage of the service error. That's number eight for Louisville. They've got to make sure that they're in rotation, putting some points on the board when they can. And they have to do it at the service line. Too many? Eight's too many? Eight. For Louisville, eight's too many. Okay. Regardless of how aggressive you want to serve, you don't. You still don't want to miss. Here's Anna Pringle on once again. Look at the perfect pass. It's like practice. Nice dig by Ruben. Good read. And Kendall Kip unloading down the line. I love that to see is, it. That is world-class transition volleyball. I told you in the first set, I love Kendall Kip coming out of that D. Even if they bring the middle behind, it just opens the net. You see that McKenna was running that six behind the setter, and you've got the D for Kendall Kip, and it's going to work every time. Stanford back within two. Very similar to the opening set to Beer. De Beer comes through. She still wears that very heavy brace on her left knee that she injured exactly a year ago in Palo Alto. But she didn't tear her ACL. She tore her PCL and, and I, missed two full months. And I think she only wears it because she has to, but she's going to put that ball right down the seam of the block. Here's Elena Scott. We'll give you her dig numbers, but it's more important passing-wise. Ruben dropping a dime. And there is exactly your point about Cammie Miner being aggressive at the uh, setting position. Cammie Miner will start to let this Louisville squad know that she exists in that front row. She's taking that second ball over just the way that she did, now, being a little bit more aggressive. Now 15-13. Remember, Louisville led it in the first set 9-4, led it in the second set 9-4. Ball set a little bit tight. Smart adjustment by Kip, number 10 in black. Timeout, Louisville. I think this team for Louisville needs to make sure they're settling down and not getting too spastic because they start to play a little bit more perfect volleyball when all they need to do is get the ball up and just get back to business. 4-1 run now for Stanford. And that ball off of the Cheney and out of bounds and going back to the middle again. Look at the number of middle attempts. Kong has eight for Cressy now. That was nine. 17 attempts between them, hitting a magnificent percentage on the other side. Francis has three, and Vicini has two. 17 to five. Baird dug into the cross court. Good contact there, keeping Stanford in system. Ogilvy giving Stanford a chance. Whoa. Anna DeBeer starting to heat it up. 
starting to heat it up. She's saying, don't play with my food. Let's get this over with. Well, she, she was a, a, among among the Louisville hitters. She was not necessarily setting it on fire in the beginning. The pipe got her going and yep. now comfortable on the left. And everybody's hearing us. And you know Kevin Hambly wants more production out of the middle, so forcing this one here to Vicini, number 14 in black. Her the, first kill. And the middles for Stanford do a good job of holding the block to create that space for their pin hitters. But sometimes the middles work too hard to not get fed a little bit of a little bit of love. Here is Baird now with six kills on 18 attempts. Working on to Beard. And Luca, that falls off the floor, but not high enough to continue the play. I'll tell you, Luper and DeBeer are both very, very good out of the pipe, whereas Kip hits it out of the right back or the D. But it's all about tempo for both of these squads, and you see that Luper and DeBeer do a better job because Louisville has middles that run behind the setter on that slide really, really well. The lead is 18-15. A good transition. Very nice block attack and block coverage. Good quality swing by Ruben out there on that left pin. Ruben now with four kills on 11 swings. Stanford hitting just over 200. Louisville hitting 365. And I think this is why this set specifically has been close. Separation maybe two, three points. Well, give, you the, give you the hitting percentage. That's a setting mistake. Close to a net violation on Kip. And it could be a challenge if Louisville doesn't win this point, which they do. Charity Looper off the left side. Looper now 5 of 11. In this set, we'll wait until Louisville's numbers, but Stanford hitting 240, 207 overall. And in the set now, Louisville hitting 343, 365 so far in the match. Here is Cressy. There's the serve that I was anticipating. Yep. I and was she's, for you, Paul. she's fired up about it as well. Kara Cressy can be a real weapon at the line. Now 11 aces so far on the year. That's against one of the best receivers in all of college volleyball. And it's interesting, maybe Cressy is testing her to make sure that she can pass this ball because Cressy pushes that ball and then it just drops like the air just sinks out of the balloon. Timeout called by Stanford with Louisville leading 20 to 16. Tomorrow we'll have two Monday night football matchups for you. Derek Carr will lead the Saints against number one overall pick Bryce Young and the Panthers at a special start time, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. And Nick Chubb and the Browns take on T.J. Watt and the rival Steelers at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Louisville in my, has been very, very impressive. All phases, serve reception, setting, block defense. What about Stanford and why are they struggling right now here in Louisville? You know, I can say that I don't know because they're playing a lower level of volleyball than we're used to from this Stanford squad. So they're not getting their middles involved. They're getting decent touches on the block now in this second set, but it's just about the execution. Louisville is coming back, playing that secondary defense just as well, but getting those kills in transition, and I think that's the difference right now. Talked a lot about the schedule for Stanford, by far the hardest in the country. This was home versus number three Florida before this stretch began. But look at the dates, one day in between, two days in between, no days in between, and then a couple of days in between before you lose to Nebraska at home. And then finally, today's the 17th, finally, including travel and whatnot, you have two or three days to train, and they practiced here in Louisville yesterday. And I checked, they didn't train in this building. No. Nope. They were not able to. It's expensive to turn the lights on in here. <laughs> But um, right right now, Louisville is, is hitting on all cylinders. And when we talk with Coach Hamley, he said that the lack of training, he's figuring out the deficiencies of his team while they're in play, and that's really tough. But it's going to help them coming into the conference play. That ball served just out of bounds. And to your point, if eight is too many, <laughs> then nine is not a good addition to that as well as Kendall Kipp goes to the line. She'll be available in transition on the D. Boy, it's almost exactly like the opening set. Looper on the combination play. 
I mean, it's just the Louisville offense. Glock is doing a beautiful job of just moving her attackers, moving the ball around, finding the big when there is no outlet. She knows where her hitters are, and she is setting them up for success. You've got the middle, again, just hitting off the charts. Cressy Loop. with seven kills, Kong with six, Looper's and Looper with seven. Seven of 13. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a nice response by six foot six. Sammy Francis, number 17 in black. Charity Looper has been superb to me in serve, receive, and then going and attacking. Look at the percentage she's hitting. 462 right now against Stanford. There is Ruben. The lead is 21-18. That ball is stuffed. Francis again with the kill and with the block this time against Iko Jones. Now, you know, this is kind of what I was waiting for for Stanford. We see that Sammy Francis got into some action. She got a kill out of the middle. Then we're coming here and Cami Miners in the front row. This is their best run right here, their best front row, making sure that Cami might be aggressive here as well. So Louisville cannot ease up on this Stanford squad. Wonderful stab that time by Ruben off a tough serve handled by Looper. Baird looking high flat. And Kevin Hambly once again in the same situation. Do I challenge here? Number 22 looking to go high hands and missed it just out of bounds. Now again, this is the rotation where Louisville has to be disciplined on the block because Cami Miner is front row. Out of system, pretty easy serve, and not a good contact that time by Oglevy. What a cover by De Beer. And tucks it down inside. Wow, huge back-to-back -back plays by 14 and White. De Beer doing a good job of taking that ball across her shoulder to get it through the hands of Cami Miner here. Again, starts with defense, then she pulls that ball right line off of the hands of Cami Miner. De Beer now with nine kills on 28 swings. Two points away for the two sets to none lead. Scott flying around. You got a question why Baird did not attack that ball. She had an open net. There was a single block on that that opportunity for Baird, and she did not utilize it. And here come the transition offense right here. She could have taken a better approach against a blocker like Iko. Set point number one for Charity Looper. And Glock has really settled down after kind of a sketchy start. I think Ellie Glock, the new setter for Louisville, is really doing a good job. Good choices. That is a rare, almost singular mistake in transition defense for Louisville. Set point number two. An exclamation point. Pegron Kong. But most importantly, back to this one, Louisville on top. Two sets to none, and they have been in control. 25-22, 25-20. That's missed out of bounds, but a touch called off the top of the block and give the kill to number 13, Elia Rubin. Give you some of the leaders. Kendall Kipp had eight kills. Katie Baird with six, but hit under 100. Ruben now with five kills. De Beer, nine. Charity Looper, eight. Pigron Kong with seven. Kara Cressy with seven. And Iko Jones with six. That makes it very difficult to defend that kind of balance, as you well know. Back to back hitting errors. And we're just underway in the third set. And that ball drifts just out of bounds. Louisville had nine service errors through the first couple of sets and was struggling in that phase of the game. Now 
I lost my stats monitor. They're very hospitable people here in Louisville, but I, I timed out. I timed out on the guest website. Sorry. <laughs> my visitor's visa ran out. Oh, I'm fine. We're, we're getting it back. We're getting it back. Thank you very much. There is Kevin Hambly. Once again, full well knew the challenges of the schedule. Minnesota, Ohio State, Nebraska, at Texas, at Rice. And now it's 6-2 and two before going into Pac-12 play on Tuesday against California. Yep, Cammy Miner, nicely done on the second contact. Again, you see Louisville slacking on their approach to serve receive. You see that that shank by the beer is getting them a little bit off kilter. They've got to refocus and dial in. Good pass. That was a very, very well targeted deep serve handled by Scott. And Kendall Kip, what a dig by Looper. Left side timing not there. Chance to restart the point for Stanford and that ball tucked down inside by Kendall Kip. I feel a very big difference in the energy. Stanford has come out and they're making sure that they are taking care of the ball. Louisville being a little bit lax, not really communicating very effectively and it shows in the score. Stanford doing a good job. That's a mistake. You can't serve Scott there. And that ball off the top of the block. You've run a couple of points, and you serve Elena Scott. You serve the ball right in her lap. That's a serving mistake by Stanford. Cami Miner for Stanford still in the front row, being super, super aggressive this set in the beginning. Perfect pass. Not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but one and a quarter and tapped down nicely by Bear. But you see the overload that Louisville had to take because of the presence of Cami Miner, making it a single block, Baird hitting it right through the seam. Just underway here in the third set, the first time that Stanford has led. Trailed 9-4 in both the first and the second set. Tough chance for Stanford and Vicini. Oglevy with a dig off the heater. And that ball missed out of bounds. That play sort of encapsulates the struggles that Stanford has had. Longer rally, longer rally, they make a ball control mistake. You're absolutely right. I want to focus again on the side of Louisville. They're a little bit out of sorts, I would say. Not the energy that you expect. So this is the Stanford squad that is going to continue to build. And this is what I like to see from the squad. Got to get into a good side out Here rhythm. We go. You, yeah, expect Kendall Kip to get a lot more opportunities now in double figures. A little bit of a slow start. She was one for her first six and now nine of 24. Again, I really like Kendall Kip on that left side. She hits that really sharp angle. Just nice contact, nice rhythm on that pin. Fifth service error here for the Stanford Cardinal. If you're just joining us. Louisville undefeated at 9-0, ranked number two in the country. Stanford at number five at 6-2, and two, coming off a loss on Tuesday night to Nebraska, where Louisville was taking down Kentucky three sets to none. Tenth service error here for De Beer and the Louisville Cardinals. Louisville won the opening set 25-22 and won the second 25-20 and has been much the superior in the ball control phase, both in serve reception and in block defense. Here's Oglevy. Kip looking to score and missed it out of bounds. And Kevin Hambly, just a, just a, a, a whole, just a whole body a shrug whole body. <laughs> as that ball was missed out of bounds. Well, his team is working so hard to create point scoring opportunities. You're absolutely right, and that's what the exhale is. That is what the what can I do? What is going on? Because they're getting quality swings, they're getting good looks and opportunities, but there is just the lack of execution. 
Here's Brigitte Petrenko, the six foot graduate transfer out of Coastal Carolina. A very, very lethal server. That one pretty easy. Block touch out of the middle and a much needed point on the board for Sammy Francis, number 17 in black. You're seeing some new faces forced for Louisville as Reese Robbins checks out of this set. Reese Robbins, six foot five freshman out of Mansfield, Texas, the number 11 overall recruit. They've seen some part time duty. Oh, that ball just out of bounds. Very, very close indeed. So the team's trading some service errors. You know, always walk that tightrope yep. of, of pressure, 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 but still not missing a, a, a high, too high a percentage. Ellie Glock out of uh, Wahoo, Nebraska, the transfer from USC, has really settled down. Helps that she's been getting so many good passes. Nice play again by Miner. That's her third kill by my count. Stanford with a four point advantage in a must win set situation to keep this best three out of five set match alive. Good Tough. second touch by Oglevy. Look at this. Look at this first contact. Look at Scott again. Scott off the dig. It was as if she were in serve receive practice right on target. And then the ball blocked and couldn't quite get there on the cover. You see here her flying in off of a hard driven ball to get that touched. Just couldn't get a second one for Louisville. Looper again with an excellent pass. Francis on the slide, missed it out of bounds. And you know what? That's not a bad decision by Cami Miner, even though that ball was set a little bit behind Francis. Glock was not in a defensive position to take that sharp angle. So I will go back to Francis again on that slide and see if it works out this time. 12th hitting error. Hitting error in volleyball statistical terminology, either blocked for a point or ball hit out of bounds. And obviously, <laughs> much worse of the two is hitting the ball out of bounds. Baird, nothing out of bounds about that. Nicely down the line for Katie Baird. Louisville, I get a sense they've taken their foot off the, the gas a little bit. They're allowing a team like Stanford, which you do not want to do, because Stanford is going to figure it out. You don't want a team like Stanford to just ease up, and by the time you know it, they've, they're out of the set and pushing it to a fourth. Both outsides passing the ball well. Another chance for Stanford to extend their lead. Right on the sideline by Baird once again. They're coming. They're coming, Paul. Katie Baird hitting 358 so far on the year, and we were joking around a little bit with Danny Busboom Kelly. No joking anymore. Stanford on top by six. When Target's Threshold Decor welcomes more seasonal style for less. When rewards come with quality and coziness. And when you get low prices on the trends you love. That's totally Target. Some people just know that's not gonna fit. Ooh, that's not gonna fit. Really? No, I'd cut it in half and make two chairs. Those are the people who know you're in good hands with Allstate. Waiting for a sign for when to get a great deal on a used vehicle certified by Toyota? Voila, an actual sign. Cracked windshield on your new car? You don't have to take it to the dealer. Bring it to SafeLight. We do more replacements and recalibrations than anyone else. Thank you so much. Schedule now. SafeLight repair, SafeLight replace. Dealing with too much fucking. Let's go, Get on your feet. Back inside the Yum Center. And while we've got a moment, want to remind you here's next week's Sunday night baseball matchup. 
We'll take you out to Chavez Ravine for the big fi season finale between the Giants and the Dodgers. LA's magic number to clinch the NL West is two, and San Francisco is in the thick of the wild card chase. Seven Eastern, four Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins at six Eastern, three Pacific with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Iko Jones coming out of a timeout. Nice dig by Pringle down the line. And Baird is able to tuck that ball down inside. Differences right now for Stanford and for Louisville. I think the difference for Stanford is they're just taking care of the ball. They're getting second quality touches. For Louisville, I think they, again, took their foot off the gas a little bit, and it's causing a team like Stanford to be up by seven right now. Nice block. Big block by the Stanford Cardinal. And as you mentioned, here they come. Look, these are come. very, very talented experienced volleyball players. They know when it's not going smoothly, and but the they can find smooth. And the physicality, you see that Stanford is just moving well on that block. Mancini taking away that hole, and again, you have it right there. That ball was set a little low, and DeBeer tried to make something happen. And this is the energy that I was talking about. I needed to see this from a squad like Stanford, and they are just taking care of business. A quick, dramatic third set turnaround for the fifth ranked Cardinal. That ball served out of bounds. That ends a 5 nothing run for Stanford. I also think the difference maker for Stanford was that Cami Miner got way more aggressive and she got some excitement out of her squad. She's got three kills and I think they came out of this set alone. Also now Stanford with seven blocks to only three for Louisville. Still struggling to stay consistently in system. That ball over the top and missed just out of bounds by Baird. And you know, that's Baird's shot, and that could have easily been in, and no defender for Louisville was around to even get a touch on that ball. So we're going to look to have Baird go deep into these corners again. Louisville is really struggling from the offensive end, and they were nothing but perfect early on. Nice dig by Scott. And then off of Ogilvy. All started by the dig. The Libero down the line, Elena Scott. Now you see the position right here. You see no block. And Elena Scott is just there to take that ball. That is what an excellent defender does. No block. She gets that ball up, allows her setter to make a play at it. 10 digs now for Scott. She averages 4.5 per set so far on the year. Offensively, the struggles, we didn't see any of those in the opening two sets for Louisville. Three of 17 with four errors hitting negative here in the third. And that ball just out of bounds. Well, we've been saying that with some regularity. That's the eighth service error for Cami Miner and Stanford, the 11th for Elena Scott and Louisville. And Louisville, the middles have been removed from this set so far, and it, I think that's what's showing in the score as well. Yeah, we have not called Cressy or Kong hardly at all, but we have Kendall Kip. Wow, yes. wow, what a shot. Again, I absolutely love Kip on that left pin. You see how fast and physical, right? Glock was nowhere to be found on that block. Kip now with 11 kills. Katie Baird has 11 as well. Kip up to 241. Takes a lot of difficult swings. Out of transition on the right side is the opposite. Here's Bear. DeBeer out of the play. Got to go to Looper in the back court. Cover by Scott. That's what pros do. They save you. What a cover by Elena Scott. You're, you're not lying on that one. You see that right there. Just an arm, just a touch. But it lands right on Glock's hands to be able to transition a quick tempo ball to DeBeer on the, on the left pin. DeBeer back to serve now with a dozen kills. Perfect pass. DeBeer saying, what else have you got? Now it's clearly a double contact. That ball went through the hands of Ellie Glock. And that, you know, that's just unfortunate, really. Good defensive dig by DeBeer. Maybe she needs a towel on her, but just an unfortunate error. 
the digging numbers are very even. 34 for Louisville, 33 for Stanford. It just, it just seems like Louisville should have a lot more. They've been getting their hands seemingly on many, many more balls. Scott's got that ball up. Absolutely. One on one again, and even Elena Scott can't get that one to kill by Ruben off the left side. And you know what? If we could, I would absolutely, without a doubt, give that point to Sammy Francis. She stuck the middle, was able to get Ruben with a clear single block, and Ruben does nothing but put it in the middle of the floor. Timeout is called by Louisville, even after that spectacular flying save by Elena Scott. Coming up over on ESPN, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Florida, certainly to me, one of the biggest surprises of college volleyball season so far. There's Alexis Stuckey. Their outstanding setter, but what a job Mary Wise, the Hall of Fame head coach, has done once again. Lost Merritt Beeson to Nebraska, lost yep. Bree Kelly, and here she is once again going into this big match between number one and number three, Carter Booth. Last year at Minnesota, this year she's taken her six foot seven frame <laughs> up the road to Wisconsin. I still don't know how that works, but it does. And I mean, doing damage, look at the hit percentage there. This is going to be a battle, and I think this is going to see who will come out as number one in the Super that's coming up later on from Gainesville, Missouri versus Tennessee. Tennessee, Morgan Fingal is one of my favorite players in the mm -hmm. country. Tennessee's got a lot more depth. Interesting match coming up. University of Houston, BYU, that now in the Big 12. And then you have uh, coming up Tennessee and Kentucky once again, number 21, Kentucky. Got some work to do. Craig Skinner's probably scratching his head after that loss. They have had a very, very difficult non-conference. And they have some really nice pieces coming back. Grom or Johnny Teeler. Reagan Rutherford, I, I, I'm surprised that they've been struggling a little bit. I think at that point for Kentucky, it's about the cohesiveness. How are they going to put the players together to work well as a unit? Remember, they won the national championship in 2020, a three sets, I think it was three sets to one over Texas in that one. Oglavy back to serve out of Hawaii, and Stanford with the 20 to 12 lead. And I think that ball was a little bit too high for Looper because she was ready to attack. The block for Stanford is really doing a good job getting hands. This time now in front of Cressy. Remember, Cressy and Kong were virtually non unstoppable through the first couple of sets. But again, you see Louisville bring in Looper, and she brings her into a great block like Sammy Francis. So I would keep the, the offense a little bit more spread for Louisville. Dug by Baird, once again, Kip in transition. Kendall Kip, I want to do the math. I think I'm capable. Started one for six, and now with 12 kills. So she's 11 of her last 24 with one error. But talk about the feed from Cammie Miner, the presence. I heard Kip call for the ball, but to understand and get that ball in rhythm, in tempo, to an attacker like Kendall Kip on the right side is just phenomenal. That's a bad serve. Better block, better block, but a very bad serve. No movement, no velocity right in the hands of Elena Scott. Stanford was very fortunate there. Again, there was no movement. Good patience by Sammy Francis on the block to just maintain, know that the beer is coming out of pipe in this rotation. Ninth block for Stanford. And Cressy able to deflect that ball off the edge of the block and down. First kill, yeah, as, as yep. spectacular as the middle attackers were and Ellie Glock through the first couple of sets, they have really been cooled off here in the third. And it, I think that just goes to show that Louisville, this is why Louisville is at a deficit. They rode the curtails of their middles being so success, successful in those first two sets, and they got to find a way. There is Petrenko again working down the line. Ruben is an expert passer. And Kip is pretty good, pretty good at that skill as well. Stanford making it look easy right now. What a turnaround and a credit to the Stanford Cardinal and their coaching staff. Boy, they were down and out, two sets to none. They were not playing well, and they've come out, and they have smoked Louisville here in the third. But for the case of Louisville, again, Stanford knows that this match was not over. Louisville has taken the gas off a little bit. They've gotten a little bit lax in their touches. They've peeled some off the heat of their arms. So they got to make sure that their foot is back on that gas as they want to maintain this lead. 
Block will go back to serve. Yet another set point for Stanford. Charity Looper's been really good in attack. 10 of 24, hitting 375, but excellent in reception as well. Set point for Stanford. Ruben off the edge of Iko Jones. Boy, what a turnaround for the Stanford Cardinal. They win the third set going away. How many furlongs did they win it by? <laughs> on the board, trailing now two sets to one, winning the third, 25-14. Back with two-time All-American Jen Hoffman. I'm Paul Sunderland. Outstanding crowd here on a Sunday afternoon in Louisville. Look at that touch by Scott. Louisville is really good at the defensive end. Ogilvy right back at you. Ogilvy again, and that falls to the floor. You get Scott, DeBeer, and Looper as defenders. Louisville is tough. I mean, this is how you're supposed to start off. You see that Elena Scott is taking that angle away from Baird. But just the floor defense for Louisville, making sure that they're consistent, they're relaxed, and then they're ready to attack. We'll give you the statistical leaders so far through three sets in just a moment. A serve by Charity Looper. Kendall Kip, we talked about. Aaliyah Rubin having a really nice offensive match so far. 7 of 14 with only one error. Sammy Francis, four kills. Katie Baird with 11. And then really exceptional balance for Looper. Looper comes in. You see uh, Kong with 7. Kara Cressy with 8. DeBeer with 12. And Charity Looper, Iko Jones there as well. Really good balance for Louisville. Sammy Francis starting to heat it up a little bit. And I like to see it. I love to see the middles involved. They work way too hard, Paul, to get those block touches. I know I'm a middle. You work way too hard to get those block touches. You want some You want some reward in there. Good job by Sammy Francis. And She's got five on the night. Speaking of that, i got to update Charity Looper's numbers, which are outstanding. Francis now registering yet another kill, her fifth. But Looper, 10 of 24 with only one error. Just got the official attendance. We'll give that to you after 13,000. Nice swing by DeBeer. After 13,000 on Wednesday night, the interest, in, the in-state rivalry between Louisville and Kentucky, 9,761. Tell you, this sport is rolling. Match the other night in Wisconsin between the Badgers and and uh, and Marquette, Marquette. 17,200. Not quite 92,000, but an indoor record. That ball looked to be sailing out, but good job by Ruben. Baird off the edge of Iko Jones. Katie Baird adding to her total. And Stanford, Stanford, different team right now. It'd be very interesting to see how this uh, fourth set goes. Obviously, Stanford in another must-win situation, trailing two sets to one. And I'm all for the intangibles, Paul, and I think the energy that you get when you get a kill, when you get a block, those are things that really elevate your play and get you excited, and I think that's what Stan what's working for Stanford right now. Not a perfect free ball pass. That was a miss by Oakland. Absolutely. I agree with that. She needs to put that right in the middle of the court, not pushing Cami Miner back because she kind of trapped her into that opportunity to set behind. That ball should have been right on top of the net for Cam Miner. Instead, it was six feet off. And Elena Ogilvy, I saw her for the last time, for the first time in the regionals last year. She is first rate, but that was not up to her standards, that contact. Got to be perfect. She'll clean it up. She will. She'll have lots of chances. Vicini out of the middle by Kenna Vicini. Doesn't get a lot of chances, but number 14 in black. And you know, Kevin Hamley wants to certainly get his middles a lot more productive. And Vincini should look at Cressy and say, you got to respect the presence of me there because Cressy's arms were down, not even prepared to block, and Vincini gets that kill. Tough serve. Boy, DeBeer looks completely recovered from any sort of knee injury. She is absolutely flying. 
Oh, I think that brace is just for the people to make sure that she's like, I'm, I'm there. She's still landing on one foot. I know she's been working a lot on landing on two feet, but De Beer is in action with 14 kills on the night. Hitting below her season average, which is superb. On the year, Baird comes right back, but back to De Beer. <laughs> Missed again. Two full months last year. Six foot senior from right here in Louisville. It's not like she's a six foot three, six foot four outside hitter, but she's hitting over 300 so far on the season. Here is Elena Og Oglevy. Louisville on top five four. Good set in transition. Cutting inside. Ruben is dug. Kept alive by De Beer, and there's no quit in the Cardinals. We talked about Kip in the beginning of this set. But let's talk about how Ruben has come on for Stanford as well. She's getting a lot of single blocks, a lot of open net for her, and she's really taken that opportunity. Cammie Miner doing a spectacular job in system or out of system when she gets an opportunity, and Ruben. Who, who did not have a good attacking match against Nebraska. Coach Kevin Hambly said she took a lot of ill-advised swings, but she's different tonight. Nine of 16 with one error, hitting 500. And that's just the veteran play of Cami Miner. She's setting her up for success with these single blocks. Louisville respecting the middles for Stanford, leaving the pins with singles. That ball served just out of bounds, well left by Elena Scott. Stanford now with nine service errors. Louisville with 11, one ace for each team respectively. What's in store from six foot six middle blocker Kara Cressy? Feast or famine? Somewhere in between. Looper is blocked. There's no way she was getting past Sammy Francis on that ball. Sammy Francis has really upped her game in the blocking phase. That's half a dozen blocks, two of them solo. I mean, that was just a beautiful setup between Sammy Francis and Kendall Kip, just sealing the net. Kong has been awfully quiet. We haven't mentioned her name in quite a while. Want to get her back into the mix offensively, and Ruben again. Elia Rubin from Brentwood, California, the California State High School Player of the Year, her senior year. All Pac-12 last year. Short serve is missed. Intra I'm not sure I've ever seen this in any conference, but every starter for Stanford was picked preseason first team All Pac-12. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. That goes to show how experienced this team like Stanford is. So Louisville needs to make sure, again, their feet are continuously on the gas. They need to figure out how to reestablish the middles in their offense and get some quality block touches again. Kip out of the pipe. Really good offense that time from Stanford. Cammie Miner is making some really good choices, and Ellie Glock has been superb as well. Her counterpart wearing number five in white for Louisville. Taking over for Raquel Lafaro, who stepped in. For Tori Dilfer, setter of the year, setter of the year. We'll see what Glock does this season in the ACC. And speaking of that, sort of getting into the meat of this fourth set, what's your thought about the ACC overall coming into the 23 season? You see, you get a look at the former Cardinals that we were just discussing right now. And I think just overall, the ACC is really up to their game. Again, you've got Georgia Tech. You've got Louisville coming in here. Pitts making a name, getting some quality wins. So. Stanford is going to be a beautiful addition to the ACC. In, an interesting addition, and Jose Gondra is doing a nice job down at Miami. Got them back into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the map right now for the ACC has got a lot of open space in it between Stanford, <laughs> Cal, and then SMU, and then you get into all of the East Coast schools. I do not want to be an athletic director right now trying to figure out the travel. And there's Kong. Better reaction out of the middle by Vincini. Again, good quality touches from Stanford on the block. Kip off the high flat. Pringle sprawling out. Anna Pringle, number three in black, the 5'10 sophomore, doing a really good job getting after that ball defensively. 
We went back and looked at the stats. After the opening set, Kendall Kip, three kills, three errors, 11 attempts. Now she's at 15 of 36. That ball's out of bounds. Now what Louisville can't do is pray that Stanford continues to make the errors. They've got to start to earn their points a little bit and get back into this set because right now it's all Stanford. They're really taking control, putting the ball on the floor, getting some points on the board, really earning their score. Baird very comfortably off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Yeah, you know, we had some fun with Danny Busboom Kelly, the seventh year head coach at Louisville, the National Coach of the Year in 2021. A little ironic. Her team was so perfect in the first couple of sets. It was really difficult to put the ball away. Now Stanford turning the tables a little. Good block by Vicini, giving Stanford a chance to extend their lead. Surprise didn't come back to Kip. What a dig by Scott. And Looper with a dig, but that'll be nullified, a net violation on the outside. Stanford has really, really upped their game. A wonderful job by the players and coaching staff, down two sets to none, and being clearly outplayed in every phase, statistical or not, to turn it around and come back 25-14 in the third. And right now, Stanford has the middle blockers guessing on where the ball is going to go. They've got great floor defense and just really pushing that ball and going after it. Kendall Kip again. Stanford is rolling, and Louisville Absolutely. not happy with the no call. Danny Busboom Kelly going over to talk to the second referee, Young Park. Wanted a lift during the course of that long rally, and I thought so. Timeout called by Louisville. Still leading two sets to one, but Stanford has found. Touches transition for Louisville on the offense. What needs to happen, though, regardless of her floor defense in transition, Louisville's got to get back to setting the middles and setting them a little bit more successfully than they have been in the last couple of opportunities. Speaking of an opportunity, there was one off the perfect pass. DeBeer is blocked by Kip, going left side to Bear, and crushes it down, away from block. Again, the block, the timing on the block here just was going down as Beard was really facing up. Iko has to position herself a little bit better to take more line and take that away from Katie Baird. Baird now with 14 kills. And that ball successfully off the block and out of bounds. It doesn't seem to me that Louisville's reception has dropped off the face of the earth, but they're not going to the middle. It's the energy. The opportunities that Glock had in the first two sets aren't present in these past two sets. So that is why you don't see PK coming in. She's still sitting at seven kills. You've got Cressy who added just one kill to her stellar first two sets. So getting those opportunities, creating those opportunities is what Glock has to do. And Brigitte Petrenko gives Louisville an opportunity from the service line each and every time out. 17 aces now against eight errors. She's among the uh, nation's leaders in aces per set. You can see why. That one just dropped right off the end of the table with lots of movement. Ruben has been rock solid in reception. Off the block and out of bounds. Things going Stanford's way right now, and they're earning it on top 15-11. This is the battle. You see that Katie Baird, she takes that ball and tries to swipe it off of the hands of the middle. Just pressing over. Just good job by Katie Baird. Reese Robbins on the floor now for Louisville at six foot five, trying to add a little punch. Ogilvy making it look easy. And off the block and out of bounds again. Beautiful dig. Perfect set in transition by Cami Miner. First team All-American is number two in black. And the reigning Pac-12 setter of the year. Double sub is unwound. And Ellie Glock wearing number five in white will come back on. I'll tell you one thing Stanford has done. They have silenced this building. They absolutely have, and you see that double sub just to get some quality block touches, a bigger block and Reese Robbins on that right side. But coming out now, we're going to offense for Louisville. 
Uh, that is a break for Louisville. Coming out of the timeout, Louisville's trailing pretty significantly. Crowd on their feet, but then Stanford just transition score, transition score. Nice dig by Ogilvy. Lots of time left in this fourth set for Louisville to make a move. 16-12. Scott again. Looper no to DeBeer out of the back row. And again, so many options. Good job by Cressy for at least being a present. But DeBeer saw that area one open. She cuts that ball, does a good job. 15th kill for DeBeer, 16th dig for Elena Scott. Tough chance for Looper, got a wipe. A little early on the block for Louisville. Ogilvy starting to heat it up at the defensive end. That ball was off of the defender, off of Camden Schrand and into the antenna, so point possession to Stanford. Nice quality swing by Charity Looper. Ogilvy being there being present right, just sticking right in that hole in area six to get that ball up. We talked about the battle between Scott and Ogilvy, and it's right there. Ogilvy now with 17 digs, Scott with 16. King things in reception and defense for both of their teams. 17-13, Stanford make it 18-13. I think even in this serve receive, I know that Stanford serves very deep, but Charity Looper is a little bit too far out and behind her. She needs to step in a little bit to take that right off her chest. Timeout is called by Louisville. They are now out of timeouts, leading two sets to one, but trailing here in the fourth 18, 13. Coming up next over on ABC and the ESPN app, the Sky square off against the top seeded and defending WNBA champion Las Vegas Aces in their best of three series. That's all coming up over on ABC in the best of three at uh, 3 Eastern time. The undefeated season in 2021 when Louisville, their only loss was to Wisconsin in the NCAA semifinals. Comparing 2021 to 2023, those are some pretty success, successful years. Pretty similar. Uh, uh, some, some cha Anna Peterson, of course, Tori Dilfer, Anna Stevenson, excuse me. And uh, a, a number of players have come and gone, but it's, it's not a bad formula that Danny Busboom Kelly has put together as they head into ACC play. 35 and one the last two years in the ACC, shared the title with Pittsburgh last year and went 18 and 0 the year prior to that. Claire Chausse has moved on, of course, Amaya Tillman. And Raquel Lothro did, came in and, and in one year in Louisville, did a fantastic job. Phenomenal job. Coming out of the timeout, Elena Ogilvy back to serve. And if Ogilvy is trying to tag Looper in area five again as she rotates out, you notice Looper stepped up a little bit to take that ball right to her chest on her platform. Good response, good call. And Kara Cressy with a thunderous kill. And Middles had been quiet for a while off the perfect pass. Again, and that started with the adjustment that Looper herself needed to make. Ogilvy, they knew that she was being targeted for that serve receive ball. So Looper steps up, making sure that that's not going to drop at her feet to deliver a beautiful, beautiful ball to Glock. Double sub came back on. Robbins along with Petrenko. And Robbins is just there to make sure that she gets that big block up on Ruben there. What a good swing. And Cressy playing some defense as the middle back and missed out of bounds. Charity Looper has been superb all afternoon long in reception, particularly defense and attacking, but a rare miss there by Looper. 
And you got to question why she's trying to go off of that angle from Sammy Francis, one of the taller, better blockers for Stanford. She really needs to make sure she utilizes that line a little bit more, either line off hands or just making sure that she's going deep into area one. Looper now 10 of 31, hitting 226. And here is Kendall Kip. Talk about turning it around. Kip did exactly that after a slow start. 17 kills on 39 swings, hitting over 300. Continuing to target Looper. Slam dink by Pagran Kong. Oh, they could have called a lift. That ball came Close. from behind her Close. head. But that's a good reaction. See, to me, to me, that's a held ball throwdown. Absolutely. You're taking an illegal advantage. If, if it were significantly closer, Kevin Hambly would have had something to say about that. It's an area of emphasis this year with the officials, not letting players do that. It's an unfair advantage. Nice play by Miner. What a dig out. by Scott. One on one, Iko Jones with a stuff. But the reason Jones had the opportunity, the dig by Scott. Absolutely. The block adjustment. We know that Elena Scott's going to get those balls up and, and PK is going to put them back over. But the adjustment by Iko going right inside that court because she knows that Ruben hits that hard cross court shot. That's a beautiful block by Iko Jones. Timeout called by Stanford. Their lead now at just 19 16. Tomorrow we'll have two Monday night football matchups for you. Derek Carr leads the Saints against number one overall pick Bryce Young and the Panthers at a special start time of 7 Eastern 4 Pacific on ESPN and ESPN Deportes and Nick Chubb and the Browns take on TJ Watt and the rival Steelers at 8 Eastern time 5 Pacific on ABC and, the e on, and on ESPN plus and speaking of ESPN Wisconsin at Florida remember they set an attendance record at that time when they played in Wisconsin last year this was on exactly the same date Kendall Kip 15 kills Iko Jones hitting for a marvelous percentage and uh, that's when uh, unfortunately Anna DeBeer was injured tore her left PCL yeah that brace is on her left leg her left PCL and Missed uh, all of two months and then came back in the NCAA tournament and helped to lead Louisville to their first ever NCAA championship match. Thoughts at this juncture. Louisville making a little bit of a push. Stanford has, is playing at a such higher level. And especially in this, these third and this fourth set, the difference that I see that Louisville has made is they've made those in-game adjustments. As I mentioned with Iko going sharp, cross on that block from Ruben. They're just making sure that they're making those in-game adjustments when the ball is in the air. But Glock has come back on. Part of the double sub still on the floor. Francis that time off of Scott and out of bounds. Just as you talked about, the middles, particularly Sammy Francis, Getting much, much more involved. Cammy Miner finding number 17 in black. And Sammy Francis had one kill through the first two sets. Right now, she's looking at number six, hitting at a 400. So the involvement in the middles for Stanford is really what has made the difference for them. That serve was really, really close. But called just out of bounds uh, from Elia Rubin. Kevin Hamley over on the sideline. Working with his assistant, Mike Johnson, the former head coach at Notre Dame. Very familiar with Louisville and the ACC. Good cover by Ruben there. And Scott, you cannot put the ball down in the left back. Usually you want to avoid the Libro and serve reception, but you got to just hit the ball someplace else. And you know the difference, though, is Beard, Ruben, and Kip think they have that angle because the blocker for Louisville is far pushed to that pin. But they know that Elena Scott is there to dig that ball and get transition play. And when you have DeBeer and Looper coming out of the back row, it makes the difference. Big service error that time. The crowd was back into it. That'll give Stanford the three-point advantage once again. Elena Scott, 18 digs. Elena Oglavy with 18 digs as well. 
So I'm guessing right now for Stanford in this rotation, you're going to see a lot of activity from Cami Miner taking that second ball over. Has Kip out of the back row if necessary. There's a good contact. This got to come to Kip. No, left side and on the tap down. Katie Baird going over the top of the block right into the open area. Really good location of that shot. You got to wonder why that ball wasn't picked up. You see the tracking of that ball. She had nothing to do but to tip it over that block. Tough chance for DeBeer. Free ball coming to Stanford. Bad pass. Vicini in a tough spot. Must have for De Beer and Louisville. Looper sprawling. De Beer again, good out of system set. And that's going to be four contacts. De Beer finished that kill before it happened. She just dropped her elbow a little bit. She's got to raise it up. I don't think there was a touch, but you might get a challenge here. There were so many quality contacts within the course of that rally, and there will be a challenge. Danny Busboom Kelly pulling out the challenge card for the first time so far on the afternoon. Stanford, if the call stands, it'll be 23 to 18. Challenging touch on the block. They're challenging touch on the block on that attack from DeBeer, but what the Referees can do is look at the totality of the play so they can go through the entire thing to see if there was any Type of touch and I don't really see that there is a touch on the block from Cami minor. I don't think the ball went over the net Net cam will give us the best view I don't think there's a touch there. I don't think so either. I think that ball is right in between the hands of Vicini and Cami Minor into the top of the tape. What what Louisville is contending is that the ball, of course, was touched by the Stanford block. So the cover play would be legal and the, you would replay the point. But I, I think this is uh, I think this is the right call for contacts. Yeah, I don't think there, there's no touch there, in no. my opinion. But as I mentioned, DeBear finished this attack before the ball traveled to her. Just dropping that elbow and hitting it a little bit too low. Yeah, there's no touch there. Just to recap, will the officials sort this one out? Louisville came out on fire, won the first two sets, 25-22, 25-20. Then Stanford was an inferno in the third, easily won 25-14, went out to the 13-9 lead here in the fourth. And it looks like we're going to go the distance and play five sets with Stanford. Because I think this this will stand. And I think it'll be 23 to 18, Stanford with the lead. But the, the set's not over. I've seen it happen. I, I didn't say it was over. <laughs> I said it, it looks like. It looks like that we're going to go five. So each team now with one challenge remaining. Kevin Hamley lost one very, very early on. And now Anna Pringle, who's come in and played some really nice defense. He's been flying around as well into serve. Stanford two points away. Good stab by Miner. That ball was almost to the floor. She read that perfectly, seeing that DeBeer was going to tip that ball. Excuse me, Eichel Jones is going to tip that ball. There is Pringle right on cue. Must have here for Louisville. Out to DeBeer. One on one. That's how you finish the attack. DeBeer, good job. Nice high contact. Doesn't matter where the block was. You know she was going to get that one. And McKenna Vicini, a, a tough chance. She, right away she turned. My fault. But My that, bad. Yeah, that meaning that she couldn't get out to the outside. Really good transition production for DeBeer and for Louisville. 23-19. I'd look for this ball to come to Kendall Kip either out of the pipe or on that D, but it all hinges on where Vincini is going to go for Cami Miner. Easy serve. Ruben's been so good. And that ball that tucked down inside. A little waterfall down inside of Cressy and De Beer. They thought they had the stuff. So it's going to be set point number one going back to serve. 
All-American setter Cami Miner led the nation in assists last year and so far is number one in that category as well. Set point number one. Out of the middle by Cressy. And I think unfortunately too little too late to establish the middle in this set. Yeah, Should have done it sooner and then that would be spreading the offense for Louisville. Set point number two. Right side to Baird, and there it is. A very, very comfortable third set win at 25-14, and then backing that up with a win 20. So 15-point tiebreaker. Teams will change sides at eight. Aaliyah Rubin will start things off number 13 in black. She has been superb in all phases. Trying to get the middles involved. Look at that set in transition and on the board first. Katie Baird, thanks to Cami Miner. And I honestly think that was a little bit of a forced attempt with PK for Louisville because she doesn't go behind very successfully. Keep her in front, make her go a 31 or a one, just keep her in front, really quick, sharp attack. On target to DeBeer. Speaking of block touches, Stanford is getting their hands on a lot of balls. And Katie Baird, now 19 of 53. And we talk about Kendall Kipp all the time, sort of recovering from a slow start. Same with Katie Baird. Ruben I mean, she has just been sneaks superb up on you. Yeah, yeah. Katie Baird. <laughs> She's not in, sneaking anymore. In every match that I've seen of Katie Baird, she gets, as you say, the quietest 19 kills that anybody has ever had. She doesn't make a real big thunderous, but she's there when you need her. Louisville really out of sorts right now. They might need an early timeout. Back to Katie Baird, 19 of 53. Kendall Kipp hitting 317. Elia Rubin hitting 455. And that is the difference for Stanford. Again, she struggled against Nebraska in their last outing. She's coming on right now, 12 kills. And, and doing a wonderful job Passing. in serve reception and in defense. Free ball coming to Louisville. De Beer again. Did that ball go off the top? Yep, touch off the top of the block. Good high flat shot. Katie Baird, All American out of Indianapolis. One of all seven starters back for Stanford. And Coach Hamley was going to pull that challenge card, but he looks at Cammie Miner and says, yeah, I touched it. Well, the first referee called it immediately. It was right in front of him. I'm glad you mentioned that because, remember, each team gets an additional challenge going into the fifth set tiebreaker. That's a better contact for Oglavy right there, putting in some good transition work for Stanford with the kill. And Stanford against Nebraska and through the first two sets here in Louisville, kind of just out of sync and bumping into each other. And, and now that sort of has gone over to the team in white. They were so smooth through the first couple of sets. Joust coming. Who's going to win this one off the edge? And Pringle extended out but couldn't make the play defensively. Excuse me, that was fair. And Ico Jones and PK had a full-blown conversation at the net. Who's going to take that? Are you going to get it? And PK says, I got it. Let's see what we can do with it. Ico Jones now with nine kills on, make it nine kills on 23 swings. Louisville hit 245 on the afternoon. Looking for the match. I mean, Stanford is up to 324 after that 400 clip in the third. And then they've just gone on from there. That ball tipped out of bounds. Ball set too tight. And Baird couldn't get a piece of the block, and we're tied at three. You know, Baird was just trying to find Ike Jones's hands, and she just kind of took it a little bit too far. She needs to wait till that ball drops and really identify that right hand of Ike Jones on, the, on that pin. Excuse me, 4-3 Louisville. Kendall Kipp was over the line. Yep, they got it. Good call. It's right in front of us. 
And a foot fault on Kendall Kipp. If she was a size 10 instead of a size 11, it would have been good. <laughs> but again, Louisville is not making that adjustment on the D from Stanford. They've got to pull that ball inside on that line. Unless they're choosing to keep it open because they know Elena Scott's right there to pick up the ball. That's a digging mistake. Looper just lost her footing. Got to keep that ball on your side. Basically a gift to Stanford as Cammie Miner will go back to serve. Now 5-4. Teams will change sides at 8. You get two timeouts. Each team got an additional challenge. Louisville is 9-0. and oh, Ranked number 2. Stanford ranked number 5 at 6-2. and two. And The service error by Miner. Stanford lost at home to Florida. Stanford lost at home to Nebraska. We mentioned surprises. Nebraska to me is one of the big surprises as well. Their freshman, Bergen Riley at the set it there. Harper Murray, they are really good. I'm a fan of Harper Murray for Nebraska. Top notch recruiting class. Number one recruiting class for John Cook. Crowd has been treated to a very interesting afternoon of volleyball. Here is Baird. That ball's too tight. Good cover by Kip. And smart shot. Ruben again with an absolutely wonderful job of getting to a tight set. And you got to wonder why Charity Looper wasn't just sitting there on that line. Because we know that Ruben is not going to go hard cross because Cressy is right there to block that angle. So line is the only opportunity, either high hands or deep line. So Charity Looper's got to be waiting there. Ruben hitting 478. A rare reception error for Scott. Oglavy. Oh, that could have been a lift. That should have been a lift on Vicini. Let's see how Louisville responds. Off of there, the chase by Miner. And Louisville does get the point and leads it 7-6. And you see Looper is ready at all times. You want to think that she saw the hole in the block just to hit right down the middle. Just some firepower out of Charity Looper with 12 kills on the match. DeBeer now back at the line. This is where Cressy for Louisville has struggled because Vincini keeps her honest, and you keep Ruben with that single block. Off of the late blocker, Ruben again, good call. Kara Cressy, number 13 in white for Louisville, was a little bit late, held just enough by Vincini. And sometimes that's the purpose of a middle blocker. Again, middle blockers work very hard to go net, pin to pin, but sometimes it's about keeping your attackers with single blocks. Kara Cressy, the first time she's really struggled offensively seemingly all season long, and she was rolling through the first two sets, but has been quiet since then. Teams will change sides, and so much. You know, we're just finishing off the non-conference for both of these teams, but, but that valuable hosting opportunity in the regional round. Stanford hosted last year, lost to San Diego. Remember the battle between Oregon and Louisville in this same building last year. So there is so much going on around the country. I mean, if I were to pick it right now, my top four teams are Wisconsin, Louisville, and then who the heck knows? There's Nebraska. About Nebraska, yes, I would put Nebraska, but Texas is struggling a little bit. And, and Stanford right now, at least the last two and a half sets, looks like Stanford. But I think that's the parody of volleyball open season right now because a lot of top teams that are ranked in the top 25 have taken some losses to yeah. some non-ranked teams. So it's going to get a little bit juicy again towards the end a of the season. A lot, of, a lot of, excuse me, with, uh, back with Jen Hoffman, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks again for joining us. You know, you think about Minnesota, they've really been in the mix the last couple of years. They've lost a couple of matches. They lost to Creighton yesterday. Texas loses at home to a, a very good Washington State team. So the level of play around the country continues yep. to rise. There are certainly always in every sport going to be those very few completely elite teams. But now you, bet, you better not nap on anybody 
Absolutely not. And it's a battle of attrition. Toward, once you get towards the end of the season, it's about who is outlasting because you're getting into conference play. So some teams may have a little bit of a breather in their conference play because they dominate a little bit. And that's why they, they schedule those tough non-conference opportunities. But you've got to make sure that you're winning the games you should be winning in conference play that prepare you for the tournament. So interesting. You know, I was a Pac-8 athlete. I played basketball at Oregon. Now it's the Pac-12, and now it's no more to think that this is the last year of the Pac-12 and Stanford moving over to the ACC. And so this will be their last Pac-12 campaign. They have won the conference, the permutations thereof, 23 times. Looper again got high hands. Ogilvy has really upped her game defensively. Ball was set too tight. And it's a net violation. That's the first mistake Aaliyah Rubin has made all afternoon. And it's interesting they called it on Rubin on that contact. I think the ball was just a little bit too close. She tried to cut it, just took the net a little bit. Well, she's had a heck of an afternoon. Maybe, maybe just a little bit justifiably greedy there. Tied at eight. Really good serve by Cressy. Rubin again. Aaliyah Rubin in her sophomore year at Stanford, 15 kills on 26 swings, hitting over 460 with just three errors. She's either hit a ball out of bounds or been blocked to the floor three times on all those difficult swings. Offensive star of the match. After not playing well offensively against Nebraska. And that ball missed out of bounds by DeBeer. I think you got to call a timeout if I were Louisville because your team yeah. is looking kind of like a deer in headlights right now. They're worried about nothing working for them when they need to just settle the ball and do what they do best. That ball was a little bit low out of pipe for DeBeer. She needs to make sure she's communicating with Glock and tell her I need it a little bit higher, keep the pace so that I can get my hands on it. Let's take a look at some news. In front row, I think unfortunately this is just an unfortunate matchup. Uh, that is a big miss by Kendall Kim coming out of the timeout. 12-9 is the advantage. Can Louisville get back to the form they showed in the first couple of sets? And I think starting with Glock's serve, this is a better blocking matchup that Louisville started with in the first two sets. So let's put the foot on the gas a little bit for Louisville to make sure that they're getting some quality block touches like the first two sets. Ogilvy with an absolutely perfect pass. What a mistake serving the Stanford Libero. You can't do that. As good as Ruben has been, you cannot lollipop the ball to the Stanford Libero. Two points away from a reverse sweep on the road. That ball off the block and out of bounds by Ico Jones. Louisville needs to be perfect. You're absolutely right. They really do. Needing to serve a little bit tougher. Charity Looper has an ace on the, on the night, but she needs to make sure that she's not swinging into the middle of the net because that's where most of her balls are going. She needs to make them go long. Yeah, working on Baird. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say. You look at Ruben, who has been rock solid in reception. You look at Ogilvy, the Libero in the number nine white jersey, who has also been rock solid, particularly the last two sets in reception. Great job by Looper. Really good job by Looper getting that ball on uh, Katie Baird. And what I meant with Looper's serve is not that she's trying to hit through the middle of the net, but she's wanting them to sail a little bit further long, and she's wanting to target Baird because, again, Ruben, like you said, has been stellar on serve receive, and you just don't want to have Ogilvy take the first contact. So that was a good serve by Louisville. Interesting to see where this goes and where the rest of this season goes. The non-conference has been phenomenal. So many mm -hmm. of the top teams be willing to travel, to play one another. Florida went out west to play Stanford. Nebraska went out west. You look at that, their record overall and versus the top 25, pretty darn good. Stanford, the, that early season loss to Florida. Florida, again, uh, the, playing Wisconsin. Both of them undefeated. One, one of them's not going to be so any longer, but 13-11 here. Really fun afternoon of volleyball in Louisville. It's become a, it's become a, a not a horse racing and a basketball town anymore. It's a volleyball town. It's a volleyball town. 
well, 13,000 on Wednesday. Wednesday. 13,000 on Wednesday because Stanford played Nebraska on Tuesday. And then uh, 9,700 so far today. And right now, Looper needs to go behind that service line, take her time, really focus, making sure she's getting that ball in. The caveat to this is that PK has to be on Cami Miner. She cannot let Cami Miner take the second ball over. Ogilvy steps in and takes first contact. And Francis, Sammy Francis, who missed a lot of last year due to lingering injuries. Boy, has she stepped it up in the last three sets. And you know what? The middles for Stanford have come alive at the right time. Cami Miner doing a good job of really getting them involved when it counts. And right now, they're doing their job in these last three sets for Stanford. Match point number one for Stanford. <laughs> Haven't seen that in a while. That's a gutsy set. That's a By very Ellen gutsy Rome. set. Yeah, very gutsy set. And it was a little bit low for the reach that we know that PK has, but absolutely very gutsy set on match point, having not set PK in a very long time. Kong, a career high 10 kills. Match point number two, very easy serve. De Beer, conservative, eight feet off the net. For the win down the line, Katie Baird. A really emotional, big comeback win.